you folks. It's good to see so many friends out there. I'm going to do like Jim Spencer and just stay down here on the floor next to the slide. And then also, since we're trying to experiment here broadcasting it on Ustream, I'm going to stand next to the slide so it'll all be in there. And um, appreciate Rusty operating the slide. Let's move on to the next one after the title slide. Here's my outline. I put Mission Impossible because we got 30 minutes for this. Uh, but I do respect people's time, and my endeavor is to get my presentation done in 20 so that we'll have time for questions at the end. Here's what we're going to do is just a short background and introduction so you know who I am and uh, talking about what I think is most important, not so much the nuts and bolts, but the strategy and the philosophy, what's kind of the feeling and the attitude of running a phone bank. And then the latest GOTV research so that you can write scripts that work. And then management and measurement, which is some of the nuts and bolts, how to schedule people, a couple of free websites you can use for that purpose. And then finally, the database and technology choices. So here's my background, starting at the bottom. Um, I worked my way up at PageNet back when, if anybody remembers pagers, I know the youngsters don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, but uh, I had a good career at They're one-way cell phones. Yeah, one-way cell phones, does that help? <laughs> so anyway, that was where I, I started out in Houston installing car phones for the oil field rigs and the rich real estate guys in the River Oaks. And, uh, and then it kind of turned into you know, I was the vice president, and um, uh, and then started my own company in Brazil and Argentina, and where pagers were uh, all operators that would type in the message and send them out, and so I learned a lot about call center there, and then I came back, and this whole Iraq war thing had me all crazy, and 2004 was the first campaign cycle when I started paying attention. I'd always been a lifelong Democrat, but I just realized I was walking in as a volunteer and somebody handed me a sheet of paper and, and a telephone, and, and so I started a company to do something better. So uh, this is the only slide that's a sales pitch, and then we'll move on. Just this is what my company does. People calling people. We do all the telephone stuff that you know about, robocalls. We customize stuff, so we'll have some of the good ones for Joe Jaworski here running for mayor where people could, we call, get out the boat, and then they could press one to talk to him if they had any questions, all that kind of stuff. So, so that's the usual thing. Um, that's the end of the sales pitch. So, um, well-managed volunteers, this is what started it. If you can't tell from my accent, I'm from Michigan. I've been living here a long time, but in 2004, I realized Michigan was a swing state. There was all this energy with Texas Democrats. Well, you know, let's figure out a way to make phone calls back to there. And that's become commonplace now. That's what I started doing. And here's why. It's because it's the best of both worlds. And you don't need the technology, forget about that, but what you got to do is professionally manage the volunteers in your phone bank because they are the best spokespeople, just like knocking on doors, same thing as on the phone. You want the volunteer to believe in what you're doing and you want to manage them, motivate them with all the best practices from call centers. First, I want to kind of get a, I think I could predict what this group is going to say, but I kind of want to know who I'm talking to so I can not, you know, waste your time. So first, uh, raise your hand. Who has received a phone call from a volunteer in a campaign? <laughs> okay, good. No surprises there. Who has volunteered in a phone bank to make phone calls? Yeah, predictable. I thought you all would say that. Uh, now we might be thinning in the, the crowd a little bit. Who has supervised a phone bank? Okay, most of you. And then who has been in charge of organizing, planning, setting one up? Okay, good. All right, so we got a real experienced audience here. So I'm going to respect that and not tell you stuff you already know. Here's your homework. I want you to go back to your counties and find out who has professional experience in this field. You all know the political part, 
my prescription to you is to blend that know-how with somebody can bring in the professional expertise. So go back to your club meetings and everything and find out who has worked in customer service, who has worked in call centers that would be able to bring you up to another level of bringing that management stuff in and that will really help a lot. So unit cohesion, and here's why, is because I think we should be doing something different. I think it, it's pretty common for campaigns and, um, and uh, uh, you know, whether they're coordinated or for a candidate to set up some phones and, and quickly write a script and set up a couple of desks and computers with van on them. And yeah, you know, somebody walks in the receptionist, kind of points them over there and says, yeah, go ahead here, make some phone calls. And um, what I advocate is an organized group and a program and a team that can have pride in what they do. So I say at the start of the season, find leadership, ideally find from somebody that has this professional experience and treat them with the utmost respect and have people who are trained in this. You should allow a four hour training program because there's going to be some social time in that but where you're going to have role playing and having them breaking out into groups and practicing and you start this group and yeah people will come and go over the course of the campaign season but treat this like a profession. It's not effective um, for people just kind of casually walking in randomly and um, they don't have good experience either. It's way better to create a team and have them trained to doing quality work. And the other thing I would say is that Commonly, people may think that, oh, because they're volunteers, you can't um, set high expectations. And I disagree. I think you want to set high expectations because the good people will have um, a pride in what they're doing and don't like it if somebody next to them is, is not doing the work. And again, it has kind of like a a positive cycle that goes on when you are bringing uh, the best people together for the project. So think for a minute, I know there's been a lot of talk about messaging here and some of it is um, custom. I know you all have some ideas about what has worked for you in the past. And I'm not talking about, you know, really what is the exact, uh, what is going to be the theme or something for 2012, but just back to nuts and bolts of GOTV. A lot of research lately and testing back and forth, Group A, Group B, what was the turnout, what was the measurement. And these are five message points that have been tested to work, and some of them are like the opposite of maybe what we used to think. Uh, one thing that's been tested is having part of your message that reminds people of voting records are public, and you can simply do that by having something in your script that says, well, we appreciate you voting last year, you know, thank you for doing that. And then you've kind of made that, then there's this, then there's a psychology that kicks in, well, oh, I know somebody knows if I voted. And um, the other thing, the second one is interesting, is to help them visualize this as you talk them through. Oh, well, we can count on your vote for Democrats? Well, that's great. Were you planning on early or election day? Oh, well, do you drive? Um, where's your polling place? And you kind of take them through those steps, and it has two things. It gets them through the practical you know, obstacles that maybe they didn't think about, and then it kind of, it's just like visualization, all this new age stuff. You know, then they visualize voting. So that's another tip. Remind them of your previous commitment, assuming this is your GOTV call and you've already made a voter ID call to them. Well, thank you, you know, we appreciate your commitment to vote. We we'll want to remind you of what you promised to do. And uh, now here's the one that's counter to what I have been taught before. Emphasize the high expected turnout. And I had been told before that you want to say, oh, the election is close, you know, there's not a lot of people coming out, we need to get our side going. But people don't like to support a loser. So if you're going there kind of projecting weakness, 
it backfires. And so what you want to say is there's a high turnout, not to say that we're going to win or, you know, to lie, but that there's a high turnout. Because then there, there's a social a psychology that kicks in of, well, uh, if everybody else is doing it, you know? So everybody else is voting. It's not, you don't want to be out there broadcasting, oh, turnout is going to be, you know, 5% or something. It's, no, everybody's voting. Well, hey, everybody's going to be out there. You're the only one if you don't go. And, uh, and then, of course, just part of your message is I'm local here. I'm not calling from some call center in Minnesota. Here's a script. It's probably too detailed to, to read, but I just wanted to show you the, the format that we use. And um, it's just kind of late for me to ask about the microphone, but I've kind of been wondering if I'm, I got it close enough. Can, can people hear me in the back? Yeah. It's okay? All right. I, I couldn't tell. So um, make your scripts like this in a block diagram. Use, you know, PowerPoint or, or something like that. It's way better, but people can't follow a complicated script that's on three different pages. If it's more than one page, it's too long. Go back and rewrite it. It should be on one page, and with blocks like this, with yes, no, maybe, then if that, say this. That's, that's the structure you want to do, and make it as short as possible. And then when you have the script, you demand script adherence, and people always kick back, well, no, I'm not telling you to read it like a robot. That's not what I mean. But you you follow the script because it was written for a certain reason, and when you get beginners in, a lot of times they'll have all the same resistance to it, and, you know, you kind of politely need to explain to them, yeah, we thought about that, you know, we thought about those things, and this is the end result. So you want them to stick to it. And here's the other thing is the dialing pace. It's all the people with the best of intentions, if they kind of walk in and there's not a, a structure, you know, they make one call and if it's good, they want to tell everybody else about it, you know? And then so like everybody else has stopped. And so like at the end of the night, well, how many calls did y'all make? Well, nobody was counting them anyway, but if somebody was, not a whole lot of phone calls got made. And, and so that's where, to have the pride and accomplishment, you got to act like a manager and, uh, and say, well, here's how many dials everybody needs to make every hour. And then to make it fun is you have a little bit of a contest. Well, you know, keep a tally. Well, how many were positive outcomes? How many yard signs did you get? Oh, you know, Betty got three yard signs tonight. You know, she wins. So measure all that. And then another reason to measure and track progress is for the campaign. Is let's have some accountability of um, goals, is like was said earlier today about setting a budget and having a plan. Well, how many people do we want to call? And uh, you know, what are our goals for this week? And if we're running behind, we need to change something. If it's not just order some random, set up some phones and desks, and whoever comes in over the course of the next six months, that'll be okay.